I would like to take this time to welcome all of you to Nakuru County. It gives me great pleasure to join you on this auspicious gathering of Clean Cooking Week 2023 under the theme towards universal access to clean cooking uh, solutions. One of the idea and the purpose of this is to ensure that we are able to really educate the masses about the importance of adopting the clean cooking solution. I acknowledge the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum and the Clean Cooking As Association of Kenya for choosing Nakuru City as the venue for this occasion. More than 3 billion people globally continue to use solid polluting biomass that leads to a myriad of respiratory complications to both adults and children. I first encountered uh, an improved cook stove when I was very young. I can't remember how old I was then, but at that time I did not even know that it was an <laughs> improved cook stove because it was uh, done by my dad in uh, our kitchen. Looking back at that stove, I think that thing was nowhere. It, it was nothing, you cannot call it improved because it was a firewood guzzler and by the end of uh, your cooking, it left the whole, all the walls were black. Data from the Clean Cooking Study, commissioned by the Ministry of Energy and the Clean Cooking Association of Kenya three years ago, indicated that 92% of the rural populations still rely on polluting solid fuels as their primary source of fuel, putting undue pressure on provision of health services. For generations, we have relied on open fires and rudimentary decals that burn solid fuels such as wood, charcoal, and crop residues. Other than resources is mindset. We should not look at it as a privilege. We need to look at it as a basic need. And that is why as Ministry of Energy and Petroleum, we are on the forefront on LPG, biogas, and also we have an SDG goal of ensuring that Kenya has 100% access to electricity by the year 2030. This team emphasizes our collective quest for promoting clean and sustained, affordable and accessible cooking solutions. Regarding to the promotion of clean cooking, Kenya Energy Compact aims to have 100% use of clean cooking stove by 2028. And I understand that the Kenyan National Clean Cooking Strategy is currently being prepared as its roadmap. The focus of the German-Kenyan Development Corporation and also the Climate and Development Partnership that was concluded last year is to work towards the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Agreement. This journey towards achieving clean cooking for all is a cornerstone of the Sustainable Development Goals, especially the Sustainable Development Goal 7, which aims to ensure universal access to affordable, reliable, sustainable and bonded energy for all by 2013. And Kenya is part of this global initiative and it shows a very steadfast commitment towards this Goal by already putting it for 2028 to achieve universal access to clean cooking solutions. And our gathering here also signifies that governments and stakeholders' ambitions to accelerate the adoption of clean cooking solutions that are environmentally sustainable and economically viable. Climate change is a common issue that our international community must work together to tackle. Kenyan government has submitted its nationally determined contributions that aims to reduce greenhouse gases emissions by 32% compared to business as usual by 2030. The UNDP in Kenya, as I say, we express our profound gratitude to the Minister of Energy and Petroleum and the Clean Cooking Association of Kenya for organizing this monumental event and to Her Excellency Governor Susan Kihika 
for hosting us in this beautiful county. The lack of access to clean cooking is a huge, often forgotten crisis that disproportionately impacts women and children particularly, who bear the brunt of domestic tasks and comes with significant health, social and environmental costs. Reliance on solid biomass for cooking is a major contributor to deforestation and emission of green gas, greenhouse gases. About 59% of our households in Kenya still use traditional fireplaces for cooking. Indeed, under the Parish Agreement, Kenya committed to reduce its greenhouse emissions by 30%, where clean cooking is expected to contribute approximately 14% of this target. Kenya has formulated a progressive energy policy and enacted a robust Energy Act 2019, geared towards the provision of affordable and sustainable energy services, including clean cooking. While these methods have served as well in the past, they now present a grave threat to our environment and our health. The burning of solid fuels for cooking contributes significantly to deforestation, air pollution, and greenhouse gas emissions. Deforestation exacerbates the effects of climate change, destroys natural habitats, and endangers biodiversity. This is the fourth edition of the Clean Cooking Week. We started way back in a very small way because we felt that uh, that is one of the uh, cardinal function of the CCK so that we can be able to really amplify the messaging across and through diverse medias. And the purpose of even the fourth edition of the Clean Cooking Week is again to even go far, not just uh, amplifying the from uh, the the agenda, but also getting even to the grassroots. And that's why we moved from Nairobi to Nakuru County. And you have witnessed that the majority of the people are actually from the grassroots. We do have what we call a World Climate Change Committees who are actually represented. In other words, we have been able to really amplify the message of the importance of clean cooking to every corner of the Nakuru County. In addition to that, even the other counties, we do have representatives of um, the energy sectors and we also want them to also continue being the ambassador. And from now onward, we are not going back to Nairobi. We will be having the Clean Cooking Week at the county levels because we want to ensure that this message has permitted to every corner and to, uh, to everyone, even at the grassroots level. Because our target is basically the person who uses that traditional uh, open fire that is highly polluting, that is highly destructive, that also impacts even to the woman who prepares and even collects her hair. So for us to be here, we supported the Clean Cooking Week and uh, we embraced the work of uh, the Clean Cooking Association of Kenya and what they have been able to do over the years. They have the buy-in the buy from the government and for us to be able to see when the executive attending this Clean Cooking Week, that tells us that uh, there's already that buy-in, but there's need now for accelerated efforts, not necessarily for acceptance that this is an issue that needs to be addressed, but you also need to see the government putting more public investments to ensure that uh, the solutions are deployed within the cities and also especially for the marginalized communities and the people coming from the vulnerable groups. There is no denying the enormous reliance, relevance rather, of clean cooking as over 2 to 4 billion people worldwide lack access to clean cooking solutions. Many of these people live in the world's poorest communities. In Sub-Saharan Africa, for example, about 80% of the population lack access to clean cooking. This situation caused in the global uh, African continental as well as global economy with more than 2.4 trillion a year spent in trying to address issues of cooking. 
Austin Kunking. Yeah, so Gamma East Africa is a very small organization. Uh, at the moment, most of our work focuses on electric cooking uh, through the, the Modern Energy Cooking Services program. So we act as, I guess, uh, orchestrators of this uh, transition towards uh, the electrification of cooking. We coordinate uh, different stakeholders. We try to bring together uh, those from the electricity access sector. So you see, for example, Kenya Power is one of the sponsors of the event here because they see a huge opportunity for clean cooking and not just improving their business model, bringing them more revenue, uh, but also increasing their customer satisfaction. And a happy customer uh, is a, a good customer for, for them. Um. Promoting clean cooking solutions is a dual purpose strategy. It not only mitigates the adverse health effects of biomass fuels, but also serves as a conversation measure to safeguard our forests. Many people rely on forest resources for firewood, and by offering clean cooking rockets to replace biomass fuels with cleaner alternatives, I believe, con I believe convention will enhance in a significant way. Within the program at GIZ of Energy Transport and Climate Change, um, we are currently implementing over 15 projects, both at county and at national government level. Out of those 15, three projects are actually focusing on clean cooking technologies. So this is the Energizing Development, the ENDEV project, which focuses on um, promoting adoption of high tier cooking solutions such as e-cooking and bioethanol, um, also improved cook stores for social institutions um, and also for small and medium enterprises. Clean cooking is in, uh, integral to achieving the net zero targets as it contributes significantly to reducing greenhouse gas emissions, improving energy efficiency and fostering a sustainable resilient environment for future generations. It is estimated that today's highly efficient stores can reduce fuel use by about 30 to 60 percent and resulting in fewer emissions and helping to protect the forest. Kenya has indeed set uh, ambitious targets to achieve the net zero emission. Demonstrating this is its commitment to combating uh, climate change and transitioning towards a sustainable future for all. This has been demonstrated in the, in the Kenyan rationally determined contribution that has set the ambitious goal of reducing emission by 32% in line towards meeting the Paris target. Based on the Energy Act 2019 and the International SDG 7 ambitions, the county government of Naguru has developed county energy strategies and plans with clean cooking ambitions set to have all residents gaining access to clean cooking energy by 2030. The symposium theme, delivery of clean cooking innovations towards net zero targets, vests, involve, transform, explicitly outlines the mission ahead. Our collective responsibility is to engage all relevant parties in the journey of revolutionizing the cooking sector with eco-friendly and sustainable alternatives. Let us bear in mind the negative health, environmental and social economic impacts associated with the reliance on solid biomass for cooking. It is imperative that we eliminate the barriers that have prevented the majority of Kenyans to enjoy a clean and healthy environment. We need to address the high upfront costs, the limited availability and affordability of clean cooking solution, in addition to dealing with cultural, behavioral, and awareness constraints. Realizing the 2028 target may seem to be an onerous task. However, I believe that the stakeholder commitment and goodwill we enjoy from previous and existing partnerships will play a major role to success. At this moment, I wish to load the partnership with the Clean Cooking Alliance of Kenya as you celebrate your 10th anniversary. You have been very committed to the cause for clean cooking.
our collective efforts are pivotal in ensuring a brighter, cleaner, and healthier future of, for our nation. Let us move forward with determination and a shared commitment to transform the cooking landscape in Kenya, making it safe, sustainable, and accessible for all. The bringing on board of the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum in this symposium is a clear testimony that the association's objectives are gaining traction. Clean cooking improves health, protects the climate and environment, and empowers our people. The use of clean cooking solutions in the wake of clean of climate change is one matter that demands our immediate and collective action, and this annual event underpins the efforts by various stakeholders on this issue. Stabilizing the concentration of greenhouse gas is the in the atmosphere and prevailing preventing global warming is the common challenges for all humankind. Achieving this goal requires the, the joint effort of the multiple stakeholders, including government, development partners, private sector, civil society, academia, and communities. Continued engagement through Interministerial Committee on Clean Cooking and the other fora is therefore encouraged to achieve coherence and avoid duplications of efforts in the sector. We hope that this Green Cooking Week uh, will attract new investment and uh, revitalize the carbon market. We also work closely with counties and as part of this engagement, we're currently supporting 10 county energy plans um, and also the sustainable energy climate action plans. And Nakoro County was actually one of the first counties to develop a county energy plan in 2022 last year. This was also supported by GLZ under the COMSA project. And I would also like to mention Mombasa County here, which was the first one to support the rollout of um, e-cooking awareness campaigns. So with the avenue of solutions that are available for you, there are those that some women can be able to access just from the funding on the table. Um, but then we also have a specific clean cooking loan product, very affordable, that we then extend. So once we find a woman who's willing to transition and for whom, you know, the setup at her house, you know, she has electric electricity connection and she's willing to transition into that, what we do is we then deploy this tool and we call it the green financing tool for a woman to be able to access finance and to offtake this uh, to offtake these units for there to be mindset change to be able to even address the topic of stacking so that even if you are to stack you stack but your primary fuel is not a polluting or a harmful fuel let me begin by thanking the ministry of energy and petroleum and the clean cooking association of kenya for hosting this important event that will go a long way in creating an enabling environment for access and adoption of clean cooking fuels I must note with appreciation that since its establishment, the Clean Cooking Association of Kenya has made remarkable strides in engaging the government and other stakeholders in providing clean energy solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya has indeed then shown laudable leadership and commitment by fostering innovation, uh, enhancing partnership and implementing policies that encourage the uptake of cleaner and more efficient cooking technologies and fuel. Enterprise, communities, and households across the country have been empowered with knowledge and resources, laying down strong foundation for clean cooking revolution. And we have all demonstrated that as uh, has been um, out there uh, by the, all the uh, partners, enterprise, and really all the different innovation towards attaining the goal for clean cooking for Kenya. Currently, Kenya has less than 30% um, of access households access to modern cooking technologies. This also shows that the task ahead is still really substantial and it needs all of us to collaborate and come together and um, join forces and reach those ambitions. And I'm very optimistic that the discussions that we are having here in the next three days, also the exhibitions and the exchange will contribute to this narrative for clean cooking in Kenya, but also in Global. We have experienced many challenges in cooking over the years. It hasn't been easy. 
But some of the challenges I can uh, recollect include the high upfront costs of uh, the clean cooking technologies. If you look into the LPG, you look at uh, electric cooking, you look at uh, improved cook stoves, fired cook, cook stoves, and uh, many of these technologies that we're introducing in the clean cooking market, they are things which the ordinary person does cannot afford. And therefore, they need to come with a, a package of uh, how you can uh, break up the costs so that a person who is earning low income is really able to accommodate the cost of this technology and fuel uh, comfortably without disrupting their lives. The very urban counties such as Ubukia, Njoro, and Molo also have significantly higher electricity access at 69.6%, 69.2% and 66.7% respectively. However, the connection is relatively low for rural areas such as Kuresoi South, which is 24.1%, and Kuresoi North, which is 28.6%. The starting point is to do need-based planning starting from where the communities are understanding their preferences and their choices of cooking and try to bring uh, solutions or solutions that can work from that level. We already know that the data that is available, it is housed at different institutions. But when we want to do need-based planning, we have to start from the, the smaller units at the community level, not at the national level. And so you demarcate what are those communities, what are their choices of uh, cooking fuels and the technologies that they are using. And then you define pathways that could be able now to transit from what currently they are currently using. There are those who may be using firewood, there are those who may be using charcoal, there are those who may be still stuck with use of kerosene and try to define a pathway that can work from them from where they are. One exciting thing that has been happening within the clean cooking sector is the ability to leverage carbon finance to help underwrite access. And we think about that, I think, in two ways. One is accessing carbon finance as a way to strengthen uh, a business or community's viability for a project. I think the second piece around the affordability is the fact that clean cooking is maybe one of the few sectors that is actually passing on those benefits to households. Clean cooking is indeed a catalyst purposely propelling our efforts to support government implement its climate change ambition in the clean cooking sector in Kenya. As we celebrate this year's Clean Cooking Week, under the team deliver of clean cooking innovation towards net zero targets, invest in both transform. Let us weave the threads of our discussions, knowledge, and partnerships into a transformative strategy that can find the flames of a clean cooking revolution in Kenya. Yeah, to all the people who may be watching the Clean Cooking Week or who have participated in the Clean Cooking Week, I think Clean Cooking Week is something that uh, needs to be at the heart of everybody because one, we all eat. So we need to care where our, how our food is cooked, how it gets to the table, how much it costs and how much energy we are using in going into cooking. If we understand all these things, then we can be able to communicate or even to appreciate what we need to do to make clean cooking something that is embraced at all levels, be it in the household, be it in the institutions. We need to embrace clean cooking at all levels. I call upon partners in government, development partners, the private sector, civil society, academia, and research to put their best foot forward to elicit cooking transformation by enhancing innovation, investments, and inclusivity. I further call upon potential partners to appreciate the bold steps taken by the Kenyan government on clean cooking to support in mobilizing the required resources for the transformation. About 20 years ago, 
it was very difficult to either bring account and bring an agenda of being cooking. Being cooking used to be considered as a preserve of the household or a weapon issue. But I believe and I have seen the evidence transitioning and changing the narrative that it is no longer treated so. Today, it is a development agenda. It impacts on our lives. It impacts on the environment. It impacts on our health. It impacts even because on our socioeconomic well-being. Therefore, it is part and parcel of sustainable development that we cannot really be able to avoid. For us to be able to really achieve the goal that we have envisioned, and that it is not gonna be a fight day. Let us think about the scale. Let us think about the speed. Let us think about more of actions than talks. But it is time for action, time for scale and impact. Triple bottom, we can only achieve it if we work this journey together. So as, as UNDP, uh, we are keen to support 500 million people globally by 2025 to be able to access clean energy and in that clean energy involves clean cooking, the clean cooking agenda as well. That's part of our broader strategic plan. Uh, but also because of the challenge of climate change, uh, UNDP has a, one of the largest global offers to support governments to be able to implement their climate ambitions. And for countries like Kenya, clean cooking is part of that climate change um, um, agenda. Uh, given the, the, that the country has a huge population, especially from rural areas that are still dependent on biomass. So under what we call the climate promise, NDP is supporting governments translate those pledges into actual tangible impact on the ground. Giraffe Obaya Enet is on a mission to create rural bioeconomies, increasing livelihoods and creating sustainable um, development. How we do that is by integrating cassava agriculture and ethanol manufacturing technologies addressing the lack of domestic production of clean cooking fuel. Climate change is a common issue that our international community must work together to tackle. Kenyan government has submitted its nationally determined contributions that aims to reduce greenhouse gases emissions by 32% compared to business as usual by 2030. Kenya has also the goal of planting 15 billion trees by 2032 and held the Africa Climate Summit last month to actively work on climate change countermeasures. On the other hand, Japanese government is contributing to Kenya's climate change countermeasures by providing JICA Technical Cooperation Project and also contributing to Green Climate Fund. It's important for households to see it not only as a cooking device, but as a, a, a household welfare device. It's uh, good for the climate, it's good for your health, and it's good for time savings and ultimately sort of end to end is beneficial to you, to your community and to everyone around you. So Mama Doing Good is um, an organization registered in Kenya that works with grassroots women. Um, we do have a 30% allowance for men, but our target population is ideally women and youth. Um, and uh, we are structured around three strategic pillars, right? So the first one is women's economic empowerment. The next is um, uh, environment and climate action and the last is called faith diplomacy energy act it requires us to do the INEP integrated national energy plan this plan uh, is actually going to have five segments one is electricity dealing with uh, power generation transmission distribution retailing uh, the power trading across the region the other one is going to be energy access electricity access and also clean cooking access to these areas. The other one is energy efficiency. The fourth one, bioenergy. And then the big one is the resource assessment. What is our resource potential in Kenya? Kenya has already pronounced itself and set up targets 
for universal access to energy by 2030. And he has also set a target to reach clean energy by 2023, so that all our green is going to be green from renewable sources and other clean sources. And then we also set um, a target to be able to achieve clean cooking by 2028. So these uh, uh, strategic objectives, which are national objectives, uh, they afford us the opportunity to concretize our ideas, concretize our efforts, and also financing towards achievement of the same. So we are aiming then to do that, and all these other strategies uh, are geared towards reaching this national objective. And also in our formulation, we have seen it is not only a government affair, we're looking for support and uh, we are facilitating the private sector so they can take part and help us to be able to accelerate the adoption of clean cooking, adoption of the uh, clean energy. I would say this Clean Cooking Week has been even bigger and better than those that have come before it. So for all of those who didn't make it here this time, please do come and join us next year. It's a lot of fun. Um, and do join us on this journey towards universal access by 2028. We do need as many people as possible to help us achieve that very ambitious target. Uh, and I'm sure that electricity in particular is going to play a very important role in helping us to get to clean cooking in every Kenyan household by 2028. We need to work together and we need to make sure that these uh, plans are implemented. Uh, we are also happy to support um, the national clean energy clean cooking energy transition strategy which is under development we are looking forward also to have the electric cooking strategy and uh, combining all these uh, under the ministry of energy to be implemented uh, this will uh, provide the much needed traction to achieve our goal or and our target of 100% uh, access to clean cooking by 2028. I think Kenya hosting the African Climate Summit and putting itself forward as a climate leader is incredible. We just heard uh, reiterated that the grid is 92% renewable here. So Kenya is already a leader when it comes to thinking through a, a climate narrative. I think with the regulations, I think the government has shown they're open to hearing feedback and I, I think we're all learning together. So I think it's really important to start to put those regulations on the book, but to be able to evolve, to evolve them as our technologies evolve, as our business models evolve, and as our thinking around this evolves and, and new science emerges. With these remarks, I would like to come to an ending. And on behalf of the German operation, I'm happy to join you here for celebrating the fourth edition of the Sheen Booking Week.